Many educators place a good deal of importance on means and other measures of central tendency when doing quantitative analysis. However, measures that show how a group of numbers spread or disperse are just as important. The major measures of dispersion are the range, deviation, variance, and standard deviation. The range. The range is the difference between the highest and lowest values in a group of values. For example, the range of the following group of values, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100, is 40, and is calculated by subtracting the lowest value, 60, from the highest value, 100, which equals 40. The range is the simplest measure of dispersion and is useful in making an initial determination of the spread in a group of values. The deviation. The deviation is the difference plus or minus between a value and the mean of a group of values. For example, if we look again at the group of values used previously, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100, the deviation of the value 90 in the above group of values is 10, and is calculated by subtracting the mean 80 from the value 90. The deviation is used to determine the distance of one score from the mean. The variance. The variance is the sum of all the squared deviations from the mean divided by the number of values in the group. In groups of value when an n less than 15, a statistical adjustment is made. The variance is the sum of all the squared deviations from the mean divided by n minus 1. Please look at the graphic in front of you for an example of how to calculate the variance for the values 60, 70, 80, 90 and 100. In this example, the variance is 250. The standard deviation. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance and the most frequently used measure of dispersion. The standard deviation, or SD, in the previous example is 15.811 and is determined by calculating the square root of the variance. As an indication of the importance of these measures of dispersion, a number of commonly used statistical procedures such as the t-test and ANOVA use the variance to calculate the significance of the differences in the means. In addition, in almost any study where the mean is used to describe a population, it is considered good practice to include the standard deviation. The normal distribution. The normal distribution or curve is also based on the standard deviation of a given sample. Many years ago, statisticians observed the pattern when analyzing means and standard deviations for large samples. For example, fundamental data such as height, weight, or blood pressure would distribute equally on both sides plus and minus of the mean in a bell-shaped pattern, hence the term bell-shaped curve. In a normal distribution, see figure A10, the distance from one standard deviation above the mean to one standard deviation below the mean includes approximately 68% of all the values. Plus 2 to minus 2 standard deviations includes approximately 95% of all values, and plus 3 to minus 3 standard deviations includes over 99% of all values. In conclusion, Measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion are most important for doing many types of statistical analyses. The mean and the standard deviation provide an important picture of a group of numbers. The mean indicates the average, while the standard deviation indicates the dispersion or spread from the average.